You are welcome to this brief introduction to the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 22 through 36. We are the 12th of December, 2021. An outline of this material may be downloaded from the link provided below. Let's get into it. In this text, we are dealing with the second of seven movements within the book of Acts, the Apostles' Witness in Jerusalem and Judea, whereby the church in Jerusalem was planted. This followed the Apostle Peter preaching the gospel to Israelites. Last time we saw how Jesus fulfilled Joel's prophecy of the coming of the Holy Spirit. This time we shall see how the prophet Nathan's words from 2 Samuel 7 were fulfilled as reported in Psalm 16, and how King David's prophecy was fulfilled in Psalm 110. Peter's message consists of three parts, each of which begins by addressing men. Have someone in your study group read aloud verses 22, 23, and 24. Then pose this query. What are miracles? Was Hume right when he defined miracle as violation of natural law? The terms for miracle in this passage include powers, wonders, and signs. What does each of these terms tell you about biblical miracles? The text tells us that God handed over Jesus. So ask this, hand it over to whom? There are two major interpretations. One is that Jesus was handed over to be crucified, which makes God a co-conspirator in Jesus' crucifixion. The other is that God turned over Messiah to Israel in fulfillment of his promises, thus strengthening Peter's accusation of homicide. We are told that God did this by his allotted plan and foreknowledge. The terms plan and foreknowledge are tied very tightly together with the Greek construction the, covering both nouns, connected by and, making this a singular concept. The noun prognosis occurs four times in the Greek Bible, twice in the Apocrypha, and twice in the New Testament. It is always about God working out his plan, but is never about his decreeing or determining our faith or obedience. In a study group, look again at the verses and ask the participants to identify the essential elements of Peter's gospel message. Some will notice this, so ask, what did Peter not say about the crucifixion? Interestingly, in preaching the gospel, the apostles never explained the theology of atonement. Their emphasis was upon Jesus' victory over death. Then, as an activity within your study group, give this instruction. Turn to your neighbor and ask him to tell you as much of Peter's message that he can remember in 30 seconds. Then let him ask you to do the same. Continue by having one participant read aloud verses 25, 26, 27, and 28. If your discussion group is sufficiently educated to appreciate this kind of teaching, you can point out that there are two interpretations of Acts 2.27, which comes from Psalm 16.10. For the Hebrew Bible reads, You will not allow your Holy One to see the pit. Whereas the Greek Bible, called Septuagint, and the New Testament reads, Allow your Holy One to see decay. Thus some say that David was talking about himself hoping one day to get out of Sheol, that is the grave, 
And Peter applies this to Jesus as a kind of accidental prophecy. Note, however, that the Hebrew Bible of today was edited by, by the Jewish community with no copies older than about 1,000 years after the time of Jesus. And the word translated pit in Hebrew is shechat. Others interpret that David was speaking prophetically on behalf of a future descendant or Messiah who has turned out to be Jesus. These interpreters point out that the Hebrew word that was translated into the Greek Septuagint was shechet. Both shechat and shechet have the same consonants but different vowels. Back in the days when the Septuagint was being translated from Hebrew, these words had no vowels. The Hebrew Bible had only consonants. So it's very possible that the Septuagint Greek version quoted by the Greek New Testament is actually the older and original word, shichet or dk. You might point out that Nathan's original prophecy is found in the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 7, and that David later wrote Psalm 16 in response. Those who read their Bible carefully will have noted that in 2 Samuel 7, 14, the Lord says, When he, that is the future son, commits iniquity, I will punish him. So, pose this query. How can this be a prediction of Jesus who committed no iniquity? A reply to this query can be found in the notes that you can download by the link provided below. As we move into the next section, we'll now deal with David's prophecy, which has been fulfilled in Jesus. So have someone read aloud to your study group, verses 29, 30, and 31. You might note that many believe that King David's tomb still exists in Jerusalem, and you can visit it when you go there. It is important to discuss together by what logic Peter applies Psalm 16, 8 through 11 to Jesus. Then continue by having someone read aloud verses 32, 33, 34, and 35. Then ask, what was Peter able to declare that you and I cannot? There was something unique about Peter and the other apostles that is not true of you or me. In 2.33, look at the phrase, the right hand. The Greek is rather ambiguous, meaning it could be taken one way or another. Either it means God exalted Jesus to his right hand or right side, meaning the position he now occupies, or it means that God exalted him by his right hand. That is, it is God himself who has exalted Jesus. The difference in meaning is not great. Why should Peter quote from Psalm 110, verse 1? Well, you might note that in Luke 20, verse 42, that Jesus quoted this verse after asking, how can they say that the Christ is David's son? And then read aloud and very carefully verse 36. Therefore, this is the conclusion of the message, let all the house of Israel know beyond a doubt that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. If your Bible translation is like English ones, then you should ask, how did God make Jesus to be Lord and Christ? Was he not already Lord? Was he not already Christ? See the downloadable notes for three ways that you can translate the verb to make. And finally, be very clear let everyone in your Bible study group discuss together who is Jesus and who has said so. May the Lord Jesus Christ fill you with wisdom, joy, 
and compassion as you lead others to discover from this passage the original apostolic gospel good news about Jesus leading folk to put their trust and faith in Him.